Hello, everyone. My name is Denise Scott, and welcome, welcome to Empowered Women Glow. And today we have a phenomenal guest on. Her name is Keisha Woods. She is a powerhouse, okay? She has her um her podcast is called Upgraded Mindsets. And this is a little bit about her, and then I'm gonna let her introduce her herself and tell her story. Strive to replace outdated thinking methods with transformational tools and resources that have successfully helped establish inner confidence, personal growth, and development. Thank you so much for tuning in, and thank you, Keisha Woods, for your time today. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. I appreciate you so much for having me on. Um, it's definitely a pleasure. Um, thank you for the words. Um, yes, I am Keisha. Um, I also go by Coach K Woods, um, founder of Upgraded Mindsets, and um, I am what they call a serial entrepreneur. Um, I've pretty much been full time for two years. Um, I'm a mindset coach for women. Um, that is my passion. Um, I help women amplify their personal and business mindset um, with reconditioning tools to give them clarity and help them be intentional in what it is that they want to do in life. Um, and then I also have the Empowering Real Talk podcast, which is also my baby. Um, I pretty much have those tough conversations, you know, that a lot of people don't want to talk about. Um, you know, I'm all about bringing raw, uncut conversation, but also resource and solution um, to help us grow individually and as a whole. So I definitely love walking in my purpose. So again, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about your certifications because you're a life coach, a mental health awareness, mindfulness. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about the NLP and the CP? M, I mean, yeah, C B T. Yes. Bit. Um, yeah. So um that is the conjugal behavior. I always say that word wrong. Um, <laughs> therapy. Um, I took those certifications to pretty much cycle in with my coaching. Um, one thing that I advocate for often is for us to get therapeutic intervention um, if it's necessary. Um, everybody may not need therapy, um, but I do personally feel everybody needs a coach or a mentor. Um, but I acquired those certifications to keep me aware of the signs to see when it's something that a coach cannot assist with. Um, okay. A lot of people tend to um, want to put coaching and therapy together and they're not. Um, therapy is, you know, something that someone that has gone to schooling and has the licensing to, you know, make sure that they are diagnosing. Um, I don't diagnose, um, but I actually took those certifications for my own mental well-being um, because I am a person that has walked, you know, a journey of suppressed emotions and, you know, hiding feelings and emotion. And I did get therapeutic intervention. So okay. those certifications, um, they help me with regards to coaching and to pay attention to things that might be outside of my realm. Um, but it also helped me apply it to my real life as well. And also to, you know, keep me, you know, keep my mental well-being on a healthy level, which I feel is very important day to day. Yes, yes. I love your quote. It says, it's time for you to find you. The Here. journey is necessary yes I was indeed. like yes <laughs> that's how you know that you walk the walk and you're able to talk the talk okay absolutely yes yes um it, it's, it, it's important um it's um I, people don't they, they and I, I'm so glad that you got got that right because when you say it's time for you to find you some people don't really listen to that and they're like well what do you mean um that's how I know that you need to find you um, you need to find what it is that you want for self, your purpose, you know, your values, your goals, your achievements, you know, and when I say it's time for you to find you, that's what I'm speaking on. Um, and especially as women, we lose ourselves, you know, yeah. whether we're losing ourselves in, you know, um, family, we're losing ourselves in a job, you know, we have been raised to believe that we're supposed to be last priority. We're supposed to put everybody else ahead of us. And I no longer live with that mindset. Um, and that's kind of where Upgraded Mindsets was created because mm. um, 
you know. I wanted to ask you, how did you come up with the name, <laughs> sis? Like, yes, yes, yeah. upgrade yourself. I literally and came up start. that, yes, the mind is where everything begins. I stress that on a daily. Um, Upgraded Mindsets, the name was actually created during a 30-day fast of social media back in April of 2020. Mm. Um, I really was sitting, this really, it had actually began my transformational journey. Okay. Um, and in the midst of that, I had no, I wasn't thinking about being an entrepreneur, but one particular day in April, I was really thinking about some things because my mind was getting clear because I was really being intentional in what I wanted for me. And that's when Upgraded Mindsets was created. And I actually made it official uh, by incorporating LLC in June of 2020. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So what do you consider the toughest aspect of your job? <sighs> um, from a coaching standpoint, um, probably seeing people stay in default mode. Mm. Um, and when I say default, they tend to like resist. The... Yes, they're resisting and then they're repetitive in the negatives. Um, we default to negative. Um, it's actually a way of life. Um, society shows us negativity all day, every day. You know, you it's like, for instance, you can get on your phone as soon as you wake up in the morning on social media, you might see that someone has passed away. Or you might see where there's been a school shooting or you might see, you know, just something that's in a negative realm. Um, but because that's the first thing we see, that sets our tone for today. So we're in default. You so kind of like triggers it? It can trigger, um, you know, depending on each individual, it can be a trigger. Um, but I also look at negative now as the shade room. Um, I don't really look at that stuff anymore um, because it depicts negativity. You know, it depicts things that aren't helping us grow as a whole or as a, you know, or as an individual. Um, what am I gaining from watching reality shows at this point? Okay. You know, um, those are things that I, I don't want to call them negative because, you know, everybody's entertainment is different, but you can't sit here and watch a marathon of this particular reality show and then think that you're going to go and be able to apply positive factors when you've just spent 10 hours looking at negativity, looking at fighting, looking at cheating, looking at scandals, yes. you know? So that's why I say um, that's probably one of the biggest struggles for me is to think that is for women that I talk to, to not really understand the concept. When I say you have to switch your habits, you have to put the positive into your life. You know, and watching a binge of four seasons of a reality show that ain't doing nothing but fighting on every episode, that's not putting yourself in a positive light. So that's kind of where it, it's a big struggle for me because I just want to be like, wake up, you know, <laughs> understand me what yes, I'm saying. Yes. To. <laughs> me, myself, personally, I have really, really, I don't know why, but I, I like, I want to create something for women because mm -hmm. there's another way of doing it. If that's the way you think you need to be, you need to be drinking the wine, not throwing it on each other. You know, yeah. you can uh, be able to agree to disagree. So I don't know why, but just as something is in my heart to say, you know what, you might need to try to create you a reality TV show to show sisters how it's really done mm -hmm. and bring some positive light to all this negativity because it's not all that glamour. Absolutely. And if you don't have the right mindset for it, it's, you're not going to win anyway. Mm -hmm. It's a fact. That's a so fact. So what attracted you to wanting to become a coach? Was it something personal? Do you mind telling a little bit of your story? Sure. Um, it absolutely was personal. It was completely personal. Um, I spent years people pleasing and I know that my story could probably be similar in a lot of women's eyes. Um, I spent years with the mindset of, oh, as long as I make sure everybody else is good, I'm going to get my blessing from that, where I should have been my own blessing. Mm. You know? And although I don't have any regrets on what I've done for people, I do have regrets because I have regrets to me. Um, and this is a part of my accountability that I stopped a lot of opportunities for myself because I was putting everybody else before me. Um, so I... I'm pretty much being the person that I wanted for myself. 
Okay. And, you know, that's why I definitely say it's personal because had I had somebody that would hold me accountable, had I had somebody that would have said, well, no, you know, you've got to do this for you. You know, it's about you, you know, um, who's to say where I would be. You know, I don't have any regrets with regards to where I am now because I'm at the best piece of my life now. So I definitely know that it was a part of my journey overall, but it's still as as women being emotional creatures, I would not sit here and tell you that I don't think about the times where I could have made other moves, you mm -hmm. know, and had better, you know, opportunities that have passed me by, you know, I don't, I won't tell you that I don't have the, well, what if that would have happened? You know, um, it, it goes in and out, but it's nothing that I, it, it restricts me anymore. You know, now I walk in my truth wholeheartedly and I put myself first, but the one great thing about it now is I now speak from a place of healing instead of okay. having, um, which is actually my book that difference. I will be coming out in 23 um, is actually reflecting that because I always was helping people, always was a mentor, but I was always frustrated about it. I was always fussing about it. Mm. Um, now I'm just starting with my words. You know, I, I didn't label my podcast empowering real talk for nothing because I know my voice carries. I know I have a very stern conversation and I love it because yes. it's what's needed. I don't sugarcoat, you know, so it's definitely yeah. personal for me. Um, And I just want to be able to have that out here for other women that don't mind being held accountable, that don't mind, you know, still be still a little talking a little hood from time to time, because that ain't <laughs> never go nowhere, you okay. know. <laughs> Um, but that understands that because that's just a part of me being real. I'm not going to never switch that up because I don't want anyone to ever think that I'm not being real and raw with them because I am. That's the big sister coming out. I like Absolutely. That. Yes, yes. Sometimes Absolutely. I have to say, you know, God, let your words come through because, and don't let it be my feelings because the, again, <laughs> if you're letting it come from a bad place, you might say something to somebody and they take it the wrong way. Absolutely. You're not trying to hurt their feelings, but you're trying to like, look here. I'm going to protect my peace too. Absolutely. So yes, I do Absolutely. understand that. I do understand that. Um, mm -hmm. Which personality types do you enjoy working with the most? Oh, um, hmm, that's a good one. Um, <laughs> probably those that share my um, personality, you know, got a little sass about themselves. Um, somebody that, you know, is, is outspoken, um, but also someone that, you know, doesn't mind hearing, hearing, hearing themselves, you know, get told about themselves. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I just love someone that has a bold personality because I feel that I do. Um, and I think that I work well with those that have bold personalities, but they just don't know how to distribute it, if that makes sense. Yes. Yes. Um, so I probably bolder. Uh, I probably wouldn't be a good fit for somebody that, you know, just is so timid, timid and just so, you know, um, not taken away from that because there are coaches out there that work with spe women specifically in that category. Um, but I'm just probably not for you. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. I'm you know, learning with my you know, daughter, with my daughter that some people are more sensitive than others. Mm -hmm. And it's how you say what you say to someone that can really you know how it resonates with them absolutely yeah. absolutely um that's one thing that I definitely um have to pay attention to um because although I'm very stern and bold with my words um I always don't I don't want people to feel like that I'm trying to be mean or malice or you know um ungrateful or anything like that because it's not that um I, I just carry a passion so deep um you know, I, I will apologize on maybe how I said it, okay. um, but I can't apologize on how you received it because I don't know where what space you are in when I'm saying it. And that's one thing that we have to be mindful of, especially as women, um, our culture, whatever else. Um, we can't always expect people to say or do things how we would say it. Um, just because someone's saying something to you that you take an offense to, you got to sit down and kind of say, you know what, is it really offensive or is it just because it struck a chord that hit so hard? I'm mad. Okay. You know what I'm saying? 
Um, and that's just applying the emotion versus the logic, which is another reason why upgraded mindsets was applied because we have to put the logic behind some things sometimes mm. instead of thinking with our emotions. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. Could you explain a little bit more about hustler versus corporate mindset? Sure. Um, well, as a coach, I also work with women entrepreneurs um, that are either wanting to start a business um, or have a business and just are stuck. Um, the mind, again, is where everything begins. So if your personal clarity is not established, um, you won't grow your business in any way, shape or form. So that's where I incorporate mm. the personal and business mindset in my coaching. Um, the hustle mindset as an entrepreneur um, is just you getting it in, right? We hear people talk about it all the time. Like, yes, I'm hustling. I'm doing what I got to do for my business. And that is great. Um, if someone that is starting off, I definitely believe that that hustler mindset is a priority okay. as you are looking to scale your business though. Um, you now have to incorporate some of the corporate type of things, um, Prime example, you have someone that sells products, right? The first year they sold products. Um, it's now time to incorporate more of a corporate payment plan, right? Um, you know, everybody defaults to cash app, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That, for example, um, it's now time to incorporate other methods of payment for yourself. Um, you know, if you only using cash app and you might have physical products that people purchase from you, um, you need a, a card, a card reader, you know, to where you can swipe. Everybody doesn't use cash app, you know, um, everybody doesn't utilize that. I personally, as a business, um, I look at things like that, you know, okay. um, so one, that's one way to incorporate the corporate mindset, meaning having multiple methods of payment instead of just telling, sending me your cash app details, because I'm going to look at that as your business and say, okay, if this is the only way now, if you only been in business a couple months, you know, Hey, I get it. But if you've been in business for two, three years, where's the growth coming in? You know what I'm saying? Um, another thing is bookkeeping. Um, mm -hmm. that's another part of incorporating the corporate mindset. Um, again, you a hustler, you're doing what you got to do, but where's your books? <laughs> you know, taxes. where's your records? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where are your taxes? Yeah. You know, so all of those things are super important. And those, especially me dealing with a business and, you know, incorporating my businesses together, I get it. You know, it's easy to just default and just keep doing what you do. But if you're truly wanting to grow your business, you've got to take these things into consideration. You know, um, can you show me a spreadsheet where you know how much money you gross for the year? You know, what's your quarters look like? You know, how are you looking at things quarterly? You know, where are you spending your money? Um, you know, and these are things that I had to learn along the way. You know, it's okay. nothing that I came in the gate saying I knew everything I didn't, but I also was open and receptive to learning it. And it has helped me to where not only do I incorporate it in my business, but my clients get the benefit of it as well. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that knowledge. No problem. No yes, problem. yes. <laughs> um, so that goes into saying, what is an unapologetic life mean to you and how did you achieve it? Mm, well, that was some work. I will definitely tell you that. Um, applying an unapologetic mindset is something that it requires you to work on yourself daily. Um, being unapologetic in your life means that you are standing on your values, 10 toes down. You are telling people, hey, I appreciate your feedback, but this is what I believe. This is my purpose. This is how things want to be done. Not saying that you're not receptive for collab, collaborations, teamwork, um, you know, because I believe it definitely takes a team to grow a business. I have a team. Okay. So I'll never say that it, it's not. But the fact that I am unapologetic means that I don't care that you get in your feelings because I chose not to work with you. Um, it was the best business move for myself because I'm applying the logic. I'm taking the emotion out of making the decisions for my business and I'm standing on them. Um, being unapologetic means that you don't regret the decision you made 30 minutes ago. You know, you're thinking with emotion. 
So mm-hmm. if you are regretting a decision or you're questioning it after you made it. Um, that's not thinking with your logic. That's you thinking with emotion. And being unapologetic means that you've applied the logic and it's a go for you or it's not a go, you know, and being okay with whoever get mad about it. Cause it's not your, it's not your intention and they make nobody mad, but being unapologetic means that you know, you can't please everybody. Mm-hmm. And it's and, okay. And it's okay. Exactly. And can't it's okay. be in that room. You can be in a room, but it's okay to know if you don't want to be in a room and i'm big on energy i won't i'm gonna be so honest um i definitely read energy and i have grown and i know that i'm not entertaining nothing that is not vibing with my energy that that's a logic decision because if i'm not uh, vibing with it and it ain't resting with my energy then that means i'm not applying my best yes and i'm gonna apply my best Mm -hmm. Can you tell the viewers and the audience a little bit about what does it mean to put yourself on a mental budget? Mm. Oh, <laughs> mm. Go on. Go on. I did my own work. Hey, I love I it. My own work. I went all up and down. That I was like, oh, this is, oh, let's talk. Oh, it's like, yes. Could you please? Could you please? Could you Absolutely. Please? Um, putting yourself on a mental budget, people, means you taking the time to figure you out. My quote stands tall. You have to figure out your life purpose. Your mental budget means that you are making decisions for you, not what everybody else think you should be doing. Um, As an entrepreneur, I will tell y'all the truth. I will shut down everything for a day or two if I need to. If I feel like my mental well-being is being challenged at that time, I will shut down everything from the telephone to the emails. If I have a podcast scheduled to record that day, I will reschedule it. Um, I am completely unapologetic in that because I believe wholeheartedly that's why a lot of us hurt Mm. mentally because we will keep going when we need to take that mental break. Um, so I will shut everything down. And although I know that everybody is not capable of doing that, um, you can shut down for 15 minutes, you know, you can shut down for 20 minutes, 10 minutes, you know, take your, your break at work and go sit in your car and, you know, listen to a song that, you know, might be positive for you. Um, You know, putting yourself on a mental budget means positively reaffirming yourself every day that you are going to be successful in any and everything that you achieve. Um, I'm super big on affirming what you want in your life. Um, You speak negative, you will attract negative. Um, So your mental budget needs to be spent adding positive habits to your daily routine. And that could be something as simple as I'll give you guys a tip that, you know, I share often. And that is put a put a reminder in your phone mm-hmm. and give yourself some positive affirmation. Set it for three times a day. Um, it could go off at any given point of the day. You could be driving your car um, and that calendar reminder go off and say, you know, affirm yourself for 60 seconds. Hey, guess what I'm going to do? Affirm myself for 60 seconds. Ooh, this shirt look good on me today. Ooh, I like how them earrings rocking on me. Ooh, ooh, they did my eyebrows good this week. You know, those type of things matter. Um, That is all a part of you taking action to ensure that your mental budget is where it's supposed to be. Now, we have those down days, people. Be okay with taking them. But I will say this, do not stay there. Don't get caught up in the realm of staying stuck in your bad days because I'm going to be honest, um, social media is making it seem like it's okay to have bad days and it is, but it's not okay to stay there. You know, there has to be something to get you out of that, you know, so applying positive habits on a daily that will gradually be stuck in your mind to where, oh, I ain't affirmed myself today. It's three o'clock and I still ain't did no affirmation for today. Let me sit down. Um, It's times where I pull over in my car <laughs> and will affirm myself for five straight minutes. Real quick. Real quick. Um, It's just really involved having intention on your positivity. Just like we have intention on sharing stuff that we see, you know, people's drama and, and stuff like that. We get caught up in, in watching the live streams and stuff like that. Be just as, as intentional in doing that for your positives as you do for the drama. 
if not more. That's it. That's it. You know, you got to affirm your positives. You got to create it. It's not positive is not a default for us. It is something that we have to put action to every single day. Mm -hmm. And I've been telling myself, if you can say those affirmation and those declarations, you know, those are good. But you also need to dress up for yourself. Mm -hmm. You need to show up for yourself. You need to dress like you're already going to that boardroom. You know, don't do it every single day. But just do it enough to where you're saying, okay, I know I feel good about myself just the way I am with my Martin ears, my big forehead or whatever it is. Love yourself. Period. Period. And just believe that you have, you know, turn your profit into pain. No, mm -hmm. turn your pain into profit is what I'm yeah, trying to I say. I got what you meant. I yes, definitely. yes. <laughs> I got what you meant. And you're right. You know, you are absolutely right. Um, we're going to have obstacles. Um, that's one thing that, you know, once we understand that we're going to have obstacles, we're not going to have a perfect life. We're going to have things and people that are going to try to deter us and distract us. But if we have policies and procedures in place to, you know, battle those then we'll we'll be good you know the the hard the hit won't be as hard when it does happen because mm -hmm. that's one thing i definitely tell my clients we are going to encounter encounter some obstacles we are going to maybe hit a wall you know but we're going to have the tools to reroute as soon as that happens you know so instead of it hitting a brick wall we hitting a sponge wall and we just gonna bounce right back and just go ahead and take <laughs> the next route you know what i'm saying so um that's one thing that i'm definitely adamant about is being real with my clients or with anybody that wants to work with me and saying, hey, there are going to be obstacles. You know, they're going to be there, but we're going to overcome them just like we do everything else. Tell us a little bit more about what it means to create a time frame to sparking accountability of the situation to be dispersed in a timely manner. Um, we deflect a lot. Deflection is a big, big part of a lot of our stagnation. Mm. We don't, we don't, we don't want to admit that we made choices that weren't, you know, necessarily the best decisions for us. We want to deflect that and say, well, such and such would have got their life together. Then I wouldn't have had, no, you waited too long for such and such to get their life together. And they didn't. Um, do I believe that there should be a time frame? Yeah, everybody should have a time frame to show you their intentions. But if they show you the first time, believe them. Mm. Don't, don't, don't sugarcoat it and say, you know what, I'm gonna keep waiting and keep waiting because now you're getting angry. Now you're getting bitter. Now you're upset. And now you can't move forward because you're stuck. You're living in that pit and you don't know how to get out. Yep. Yep. So it's just a matter of understanding that it's going to hurt. Um, those decisions aren't going to always be, you know, an easy decision. It's easy to default and stay with negativity and stay with havoc and stay with toxic behaviors and environments because that's what we're used to. But I want to change that narrative because it's not normal. I don't want us to keep conducting ourselves like it's normal to live in havoc. It's not. We can live a life without it, you know, um, but what sacrifices are you really willing to make to make that happen? Because at the end of the day, that's what it's about. What sacrifices you're willing to make to ensure that you live a peaceful, fulfilling life of everything that you want to do, your reality. Mm. Yes, yeah. yes. We only have a couple of more minutes, people. This was such a beautiful interview. Thank you. Thank you for your time, Ms. Keisha. Can you please tell the audience and the viewers where they can find you on your social media channels, please? Absolutely. Um, I am on all social media platforms like Facebook, TikTok, Instagram um, under Coach K-A-Y-W-D-S. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn under Keisha Woods and that's K-I-S-H-A. Um, find all things Upgraded Mindsets at www.upgradedmindsets.life. Um, I've got a couple things coming out for the new year. Um, if you're something that you're wanting to work with me on, um, there's a couple packages that are available um, for us to kick off 2023. So, um, but anything, you know, definitely reach out. I'm offering complimentary conversations. So click the link on there to schedule that with me. Um, hey, I'm all about empowering our growth and I'm going to do that by any means necessary. So holla at your girl. Thank you. Thank you. This has been another episode. As always, be bold, be beautiful, and be blessed. We do welcome donations and subscriptions. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you.